That's what I thought. They also want to charge. Uh, I would like to talk about the various aspects of the transverse force uh, that acts on quarks in deep elastic scattering. Um, I'm going to start with a brief introduction about 3D imaging. Uh, even though this is an old result, I'm actually uh, showing you some new result which. Uh, resembles that old result and um, I think it's useful uh, to review how the 3D imaging was uh, obtained. Uh, then I'm going to talk how the, the polarized PDF G2 is related to the transverse force acting on quotes in DIS and uh, we move from PDFs to GPDs uh, in the case of twist three, this allows us to obtain position space information about the transverse force. Uh, so this is the result that you hopefully know. If you take GPDs for C is equal to zero, and you take the 2D Fourier transform, what you obtain is quark distributions in impact parameter space, where the reference point of the impact parameter is the transverse center of the uh, momentum of the uh, entire hadron. And that's how the result is obtained. Uh, you start from a transversely localized state. Uh, it's a state that has a fixed plus component of the momentum, but is a uh, superposition of different transverse momenta. Uh, and the state that you construct this way is an eigenstate of the transverse center of momentum with eigenvalue zero. Um, the, the reason that you can do such a thing is that in the light cone framework, there is a Galilean subgroup of transverse boosts. And uh, because of that, a construction like this, which you probably know from non relativistic quantum mechanics, is also possible in a relativistic context. And if you, for example, compute the charge distribution as a function of the impact parameter, E perp is where you probe the charge distribution. And since R perp is at zero, it's relative to uh, the center of momentum of the hadron. Uh, if you look at the charge distribution in such a state, then um, if you, if you uh, use uh, how these states were constructed, uh, what you wind up with is non forward matrix elements of the light cone charge density operator, which is nothing but the uh, twist to uh, GPDs for C is equal to zero. C is equal to zero because P plus is the same here and there, and that's necessary to, uh, because I'm talking about an expectation value in this state. And um, one of the ingredients that was crucial in reaching this result was that this matrix element here depends only on the transverse momentum transfer. For example, it doesn't depend on P per. That would have been a disaster. Um, and lambda and lambda prime are the nucleon and helicity, so you get something similar for different combinations of the nucleon and helicities here. Um, that's how we expect the impact parameter dependent distributions to look like. Uh, looking at moments in that is QCD that confirms this expectation. As you go higher in X, the generalized form factors become less dependent on the momentum transfer reflecting the fact that the distribution at high x gets not only smaller, but also narrower. And higher moments emphasize the high x region. Once you introduce transverse polarization, these distributions are no longer axially symmetric. The deviation from axial symmetry is described by the, uh, the generalized parking distribution E, which is what you get when you momentum dissect the Pauli form factor F2. And there's some relation to the anomalous magnetic moment contribution uh, from each quark flavor 
and the transverse flavor dipole moments. And that's why we expect that these transverse deformations are fairly significant. And that's also been seen in lattice QCD calculations. <coughs> One of the experiments where you can see this is uh, see this. Uh, if you have a nucleon that's polarized into the screen, um, if you believe the deformations on this slide and the signs are not randomly chosen, they are dictated by the anomalous magnetic moments of the proton and the neutron, which was used to obtain the up and down contribution. Um, if you have a situation like this where the up quarks are predominantly on the lower side of the nucleon when the virtual photon knocks out an up quark, which perhaps fragments into a pi plus, then uh, if you make the assumption that the final state interaction is on average attractive, um, then uh, the pi plus is more likely to be deflected this way, or the up quark before it fragments into a pi plus is more likely to be deflected this way. And uh, this was seen by the Hermes collaboration. Uh, later, it was also seen by Compass when they looked at the uh, proton target. And I mention that because I come back to these signs when I talk about the force, because the force should point in the same directions if you believe this fairy tale. Um, to get to the force, uh, we have to go to twist three. And the easiest, most easily accessible example is uh, G2 or G transverse. Um, it appears in the double spin asymmetry when you have a transversely polarized target and a longitudinally polarized beam. And in, in that scenario, the contribution from G1 is uh, the contribution from G1 is uh, suppressed. I mean, usually for longitudinal, longitudinal double spin asymmetries, the uh, contribution from G1 dominates uh, in the Birkin limit. Uh, for the longitudinal transverse, that's not the case, and it's easier to extract uh, the contribution from G2. And G2 uh, consists of a Vanzorovicic part, which is calculable once you know G1 and the remainder. And the remainder contains more gluon correlations. Uh, specifically, if you look at the x squared moment, you get a quark gluon correlation that looks like this. A local operator, quark density, with a gamma plus, and uh, the gluon field strength tensor, the plus per component, evaluated at the same position. And there's a, a couple of observations when, that you can make when you look long enough at this uh, matrix element. One is, if you write this light cone plus Y component, if you write that in terms of electric and magnetic fields, you get that weird linear combination of the electric field in the Y direction and the magnetic field in the X direction, which happens to be, up to an overall sign, the uh, what you get for the Lorentz force for a charged particle that moves with the velocity of light in the minus z direction, uh, which happens to be what the quark does in a PIS experiment after absorbing the virtual photon. Um, so that's already an indicator that this matrix element has something to do with an average force because you 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 correlating the quark density with the Lorentz force that it would experience if it started moving in the minus z direction. Um, another indicator is, I haven't written this down yet, but if you look at the chu sturman integral, that tells you something about the transverse impulse that a quark acquires from the final state interactions uh, before it fragments. The two Sturman integral involves the same operators, except that the gluon field strength tensor is not evaluated locally, but it's integrated along the light cone from zero, the position of the quarks, to light front 
infinity. Um, and Chu Sturman integrals has to a clear interpretation as the transverse impulse that the active core gets from the final state interaction. Uh, this matrix element is the first integration point of the Chu Sturman integral, uh, which is another indicator that the physical interpretation of this object is that of a transverse force. Um, that insight tells us something both about the sign of D2 and the expected magnitude of D2. Uh, the sign, well, if you believe this fairy tale about the sign of the single spinner symmetries, then the sign of uh, D2 for up and down quotes, respectively, should be a direct consequence. And indeed, if you if you work out the sign conventions, it turns out that the sign of D2 in this picture should be opposite to the sign of the corresponding Silas functions. Uh, the second insight that you get from this is if you ask yourself what magnitude of a force should you expect? Well, if you, if you look at the a force interpretation of this matrix elements and take into account all these factors here, the relation between the average force and D2 involves a factor nucleon mass squared. Uh, the reason it comes in here is because D2 was defined to be dimensionless to begin with, and so the dimensions have to come back in, and that's where the factors of M squared come from. And uh, m squared is a big number. Um, I like to write it as 5 GV per Fermi because a GV per Fermi, that's the string tension. And uh, in strong interaction physics, you would expect a force that arises from a single, that causes a single spin asymmetry to be significantly less than the string tension. Why? Well, if the quarks here start moving, there will be, it's not quite as extreme as, as I've drawn here. So there will be some spectators that pull it in this direction and some spectators that pull it in the opposite direction. And in the end of the day, you expect a partial cancellation, an incomplete cancellation, but um, typically you would expect a force that's less than the string tension less than a uh, GV per Fermi, uh, actually significantly less. And so the typical scale that you expect for D2 is 0 0.01, um, which is consistent with uh, Slack experiment and past JLab experiments and also with uh, model calculations and some ancient lattice QCD calculations of that quantity. I'll come back to that later because there's some disturbing newer results. It's disturbing for me. Um, <clears throat> before I get there, uh, it's actually not only G2, it's everything twist three that has some kind of force interpretation. Uh, for example, E of X, uh, Anselm man mentioned it this morning. Um, the plans to extract E of X from JLab data. And in the same sense that the X squared moment of G2 teaches you about the Sivers force, uh, the X squared moment of E of X teaches you something about the transverse force on a transversely polarized core in an unpolarized target. That is the force that causes the Bumaldus uh, effect. Formalis uh, asymmetry. Uh, in the case of H2 or H longitudinal, H longitudinal is H1 plus H2, just like G transverse is G1 plus G2. Uh, in the case of H2, it turns out that the X squared moment needs to vanish uh, identically and uh, the <coughs> one can kind of uh, visualize this, because if it was non-zero, it would describe the transverse force on a 
transversely polarized torque in a longitudinally polarized target, where you would describe the longitudinal asymmetry. And by parity, such an asymmetry needs to vanish. Uh, if you go one, one moment higher to the x cubed moment, that's in this paper here, one finds that this moment has an interpretation as the longitudinal force gradient. Um, in, in those cases, if you take the x squared x cubed moment, you get something more complicated, which we were unable to, to really associate a simple physical interpretation with. And later on, I'm going to talk about uh, twist three GPDs. And what happens in the case of twist three GPDs is very similar. Um, using equations of motion, which were derived we used to derive this result many decades ago. Uh, you can do the same thing for GPDs. And if you start from the same uh, correlators, uh, you get the same operator. All you get is a few additional twist three, twist two terms, I'm sorry, that you need to subtract. Um, to I want to talk a little bit about uh, calculating these things in lattice QCD. Um, and here is Wigner functions, which can be used to de describe all these quantities in a unified framework. Uh, these are non-forward matrix elements of non-local correlation functions. Uh, the non-local gives you information about the momentum of the quarks. The non-forwardness gives you information about the position of the quarks. Um, when you look at non-forward correlators, to make them gauge invariant, you have to connect these two points by a Wilson line gauge link. And uh, depending on what you want to describe, the physics usually dictates you what shape to use for the Wilson line gauge link. And if you want to describe um, TMDs that um, include the final state interactions, then you have to choose uh, like-like uh, Wilson lines, extend from the position to the quark to light cone infinity and back. Um, in lattice QC QCD, one works on a Euclidean lattice, so there is no like-like direction. But one way around that is uh, the observation that a, if you look at a purely space-like correlation function in a fast-moving hadron, that's equivalent to a near light-like correlation function in a hadron at rest. And uh, so the, the basic idea is uh, to study um, space-like correlation functions in moving hadrons uh, on a lattice. And that's a program that was started by Philip Hagler and Bernard Musch and is now being continued by my colleague Michael Engelhardt. <coughs> and this is an example for results that were obtained in this framework. Um, so here is uh, the Euclidean lattice are uh, nucleon source, nucleon sink, and then you evaluate the correlator, which is transversely a little bit non-local, and the staple that extends to whatever distance you let it extend. And, um, and the, the nucleon sink here is projected to fixed momentum. That's how you uh, make the target move. And this is an example for the, the civil shift that's obtained. And this is shown as a function of the length of the staple. So each step here is one lattice unit. And um, what's shown here is the difference between up and down quotes um, because they, have, they haven't included disconnected diagrams. And in this difference, disconnected diagrams don't contribute. I'll show you other results uh, later. And what you can see here that is that this is, uh, when you 
this is well uh, converged as far as the, the state length, length is concerned. Uh, here's the same for the poor Mulder's shift. And before you ask why the noise is bigger here than there, is um, it's for a longer transverse separation of these two lines. I simply didn't have one with the same uh, transverse separation to show you. Um, uh, this one here has more noise because the nucleon is moving <coughs> faster. Uh, when you momentum project in lattice QCD, you have to take a Fourier transform, and that decreases the signal and the noise remains the same, so the signal to noise ratio goes down. Uh, and that's what you see here. Um, another thing you see here, uh, Collins, uh, once he realized that the Sibyls function is not equal to zero, uh, you realize that the correct proof uh, gives the result that the Sivers function in Cities is equal and opposite to the Sivers function in Drelian. And that's what's reflected in, in this uh, symmetry of the curve here. Uh, another thing that's in this figure, and that's the main reason I pulled it out, is um, the transverse force is hidden in these figures. That's the slope here at the origin. Modular some factors, uh, but essentially the transverse force is the, the slope. And uh, what's shown here is now not the difference between up and down quarks, but up and down quarks separately. So, so this is to be looked at with a grain of salt because the disconnected diagrams are not included simply because it is hard. And, uh, but uh, if the thing that I want you to look at is uh, just comparing this curve with that curve. Uh, up to a sign, they look almost identical, uh, which reflects that the, the fact that the Sivers effect for the up quarks and down quarks is uh, kind of equal and opposite, approximately. Um, the same that I said about the Sivers effect also applies to the force. Um, the eyeball these figures are approximately the slopes here are also equal and opposite. Um, which tells you that the, the D2 for the down quark should be um, the op should have the opposite sign from the D quark, a D2 for the up quarks. Um, such a scenario should translate into a D2 for the proton having the opposite sign for a D2 of the neutron. And um, very recently, there's some new data from the same collaboration, and um, it turns out what they find is that D2 for the proton has the same sign as the D2 for the neutron, uh, which I find very disturbing. The D2 for the neutron has the same sign that you would expect for the Sivers function, for the Sivers analysis, but the D2 for the proton would is inconsistent with the sivers for the proton. Well, this is negative and that's negative. I'm mean, looking at large error bars here, but these are the same points. And what did you expect? Something here, uh, uh, around where, this is a model calculation. Right. I would expect something uh, order of magnitude wise, sign wise, I would expect something that's uh, along the lines of this, this model here. And how do they get D2? Well, they look at the double spin asymmetry, transversely polarized proton target, right. longitudinally polarized electron beam. They subtract all the twist two stuff right. and take the x ray moment. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Okay. Oh, well, the error bars are big. That mm -hmm. reflects the fact that this is difficult. Absolutely. But the red point is only not two sigma from the 
been? That's what I should be looking at. Um, if you're just worried about the sign, it's I'm, I'm it's worried about just. just yeah. I mean, it's even closer to zero than one a bit sigma below zero. Yes. I would like to comment on the lattice calculator because it was ours. And we have just uh, submitted a proposal, a uh, computer time proposal to redo it with modern uh, high quality consultants. If you are honest, I would say this lattice points must have an enormous error there. Yeah? Absolutely. Because this was on course lattice, it was just what I said before, it was a large A. Without a serious continuum extrapolation, like which at that time, paper we wrote, you were not able to do it based no, on this data. Absolutely. Yeah. This was, the paper was published in 2005. The calculation was probably started in 2001 and completed in 2004. So I think it's, it's quite open, uh, yeah. and it could well be that uh, it agrees with a so called experimental point, and it could well be that it disagrees. That we will hopefully know it. Excellent. I hope you also look at non forward matrix elements of the same operators in when you do these calculations. Well, that was not the plan, but uh, I'm trying to convince you. So now, now you, you focus the attention on the red and blue points, but what about all the others? I don't understand which ones are uh, experimental mm -hmm. points and which ones are models and uh, if we should be worried about them or not. So this is Slack, um, which it's talked about the lattice, and that's all there is experimentally. So what about so the first the black point and the last blue is that? What is that? I don't, to be honest, I don't know. Uh, does anybody know what RSS means? Okay. I, I was try to, I, I look at the paper again and try to answer your question. And everything else is what? Model calculations? Well, lattice is, the, is this point here. Um, there's MIT bag, there's CM, uh, Carol saw it on some rules. So, uh, the this is the bag, these are the data. And, uh, and the slack point. And the slack point. And so, these are very serious. Yeah. yeah, but on the other hand, it's really, um, you know, the lower you go in Q squared, the harder it must be to yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, determine the leading crystal to subtract it, right? It can't be, you know, really. <laughs> so easy, right? I mean, I wonder how they can independently determine the leading twist. My guess would be to measure G1, the longitudinal double yeah. spin asymmetry at the same Q squared. Sure. So that's my guess. Sure, but that has also higher twist in the lower than Q squared, the more I can have of that. Moreover, you can make a. Jen, I also have some problems in this. Then it was pushing for this, right? Did, did they have, did they have any of that? It's about the same is from, from where? Well, this yeah. is Zanadine. Yeah, yeah. And oh, that's Zanadine. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Why is it called Zanadine? I don't know. Okay. Oh, that's 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 easy experiment. Single. Maybe it's that's a pun it. for Zanadine. Okay. I should have. Oh, that's Zanadine. Um. Why do I want Andreas to look at non-folded matrix elements? Well, um. The, this is the, what I would like to call the force operator. The quark gluon correlated are plus and plus transverse components. And if you take the same state that early on I used to introduce the concept of a charge distribution in impact parameter space, uh, um, and you take that state and evaluate the force operator at a certain transverse position, uh, this can be related to the form factors of this operator here. Um, and 
The, the various terms here, um, if you then take a 2D Fourier transform, uh, this one right here, it involves the transverse component of the momentum transfer. And this one is axially symmetric. So what the Fourier transform of this one gives is a, a radially pointing transverse force distribution. Uh, this one here, gives you a force that points transverse to the target, to the transverse target polarization. So that's the spatially resolved civil force. Um, this one here is kind of a tensor force, the pattern that you expect if you have a transversely polarized magnetic dipole field and you ask what's the magnetic Lorentz force of a particle that's flying through it. And this one doesn't contribute uh, when delta plus is equal to zero. Um, if you're asking uh, the, uh, the general correlated for uh, any gamma vector matrix in an F menu, it's a little bit more complicated. Thanks, Mark, for uh, deriving that. Uh, in <coughs> and one way to uh, determine this is in lattice QCD is look at the slope of this um, this function here, but uh, at, uh, at non-forward matrix element and match, match to these functions. Um, this has to be done for a moving target and there's another thing that you can get out of these calculations, actually even for forward matrix elements. Uh, since you're taking the, when you're looking at the slope, you're looking at the Z derivative, so the, this statement here gives you the lattice approximation to the matrix element involving the ZY component of the field strength tensor, which in terms of the light front components can be written like, as like this superposition, and the two terms here can be disentangled by looking at the scaling on the longitudinal momentum. Um, and this one is not just trash that one wants to get rid of. Actually, uh, this one is a different lin linear combination of electric and magnetic forces than that one. So by getting both terms out, what you do, they're able to is uh, determine independently the color electric and the color magnetic force. And uh, is that uh, I'd like to summarize. So GPD is a twist to allow you 3D imaging of the quark distributions. Uh, X squared moment of twist three stuff gives you information about transverse forces. And if you're doing that for twist three GPDs, uh, you can obtain information about the distribution of transverse force in the transverse plane. So from this information with GPDs, we should be able to plot transverse vector fields that tell us something about the direction and magnitude of, uh, core, of forces <coughs> acting on quarks in the transverse plane, um, which is what I decided to call it transverse force tomography. Thank you very much. Okay, we have we're still some time for a few questions. So I just want to uh, mention RSS is a very interesting experiment. I see. All right, thank you. Yes. Thank you. It's called the resonance spin for progressions. Resonance okay. spin structure. So the W is very small and uh, Q square is 1.3. Yeah. So that's, that's it. tiny Q squared. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so uh, in Jan, we, we did extract the V2 by analyzing all the 6 UV data. I can show you the plot. It looks just like your expectation. So, I mean, and, and it was. And we included all the cells and whistles in terms of you know, how to analyze this low energy GIS data. And I think there is no So, in your analysis, you also included the, the data on the same or not? 
No, so we included all the six GB data, and I think the same collaboration we had the analysis of five years ago. Okay, but so we did include what all the stuff that you just mentioned in your data, six GB. And then, of course, you know, we did this thing, uh, the analysis of along with the rest of the world data. So it's, it's supposed <coughs> to be the most consistent analysis, and the, the input that we find is present across the world. It's not that we are not that there is no inconsistency at that part. Yes. So uh we wanna be a uh, YouTube there to uh slide six key effects. But that seems uh the bar is the uh so for example uh you mentioned this F plus I yeah and that, that gave us uh you could divide that gave us like more than two points. Yes, which is uh, something like a real, real number. And then if you uh, now you multiply by i, now it has an i which is imaginary. Oh, uh, this it's is, not here. I it's here. It's, 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 so I would, that was probably that mistake. It's uh, and here that's also a cut and paste mistake. There should not be an i in there. This is the correct form. Sometimes there's an i. Yeah. The, the same the, the, the 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 <coughs> is sometimes uh, it shows uh, it was a long the force which I suppose is the best number. No, I, 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 I'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure this is a typo. Okay, so that's always new. Yeah. None of these should contain an I. I mean, on, on the right hand side, you get eyes that are properly there. But on the left hand side, uh, well, this eye should be there. Any <laughs> <laughs> questions? I have a technical question. If, uh, if what uh, DAS found out, the serious found in exact update to what uh, current is found. If the serious function reverses the sign for this DAS, you mean suppose that uh, in yeah. every phenomenology there is an yeah. opposite sign? Yeah. <laughs> in in citizen? Yes. Um, I doubt that would happen. Okay. Uh, let's uh, let's say. <laughs> I don't want to speculate <laughs> about something <laughs> that I think is not. I say I'm not hypothetical. Then. I mean, the, the, the point. The, the lensing point, picture would be wrong. Which so I, the, the point, the point. So we also have this problem, right? Why is the single sphere symmetry PP is so large, and the mismatch with the cities, right? So that's uh, okay. I, I'm, I'm bothered by this so many years. Um, I'm bothered too. Uh, yeah. Um, but to be honest, I. Have more confidence in the factorization approach in the case of cities than uh, well, the history of reverse And uh, there's a could be contamination for the target from the data contribution, like in both Hermes and Thomas. So, you don't buy into the explanation that Daniel gave that permutation is mostly relevant for PP. I don't know. I mean, it's like what you 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 also comment or ask a question about evolution. Uh -huh. I mean, this Collins function would constrain your computation contribution in the evolution. Mm -hmm. So you, you you say that, right? I mean, of course, the, in there uh, they apply the equation motion and all this and have different combinations of computation, just three computation. Um, so far, it's okay, but when you consider the Arushi effect, the Collins function will have uh, mm -hmm. one of the strongest constraints for all the three three functions. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I think they are working on this. I, I mentioned to Andres and Arushi mm -hmm. on this point. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And Sievers effects is most kind of straightforward for the, for the PP asymmetry. That's true. Uh, we are also consistent with what you start about that. But when I work on the mm. PA case, right? Mm. So I would think that you show that it's very small. Well, the Sybaris is small. 
and then column is done with. That's my mistake. Well, that's what I just was asking, but you know, yes, that assumes that you take the silver function from the DIS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah let's yeah. assume you, you take the DIS. And then you get something small and I don't think we, we, we really have to have more data on the DIS. And I think eventually the UIC is very important. I mean, currently, we don't have high kids. Any comments, questions? The question is just how many tricks you on this. In some sense, um, since you have these large asymmetries both by zeros, um, in PP, wouldn't that speak essentially against that, um, that this would become a function plus function if you assume that um, it's not small there? Well, I think it's not even the You would average it out basically, right? If by zero is uh, by zero, you would average out the colleagues in that contribution. Okay, suppose I only have Sivers mechanism or Sivers function contribution, right? And uh, the, the Sivers function we, we take, of course, in tree three, is called TF function, relatively larger. And then you would have a larger single spin asymmetry, Sivers single spin asymmetry in cities as well. But the, the point that the current uh, both permits and compass uh, uh, relatively low case law, and we could have combination with high tracing effect. Also, you could have combination uh, contamination of the target from the contribution. Actually, you don't have a solid conclusion from the ASC experiment. It's on the science. You can't have to say contamination. The only way I think the GIS experiments, semi physical experiments, could be contaminated if there were some contributions that we didn't take into account, it would drastically change. Yeah, it changes the uh, Yeah, so it's basically a different mechanism. Different mechanism. Even the Surya increase would be at least four, not even at least three. And then uh, this is an asymmetry, so some effects may cancel in the asymmetry. No, you don't know. I mean, the, the, the point that I want to make it maybe for me, some compass actually for a little different physics yeah. rather than the yeah. same. I think the point is well taken. We need more data, and need I more, have you may need to have that. Yeah. Yes, exactly. yes. Yeah. Yeah. and combination of course of the data, so we can try to see whether this is the same. Yeah. Say for corners, we can use jet corners and it's a jet for Sears, uh, or perhaps jet production, uh, uh, yeah. right. uh, yeah, but that, that's that's actually my point. But, um, you have uh, the things that you mentioned the jets because we have the jet A sub bands, of course, in the yes. field, which are essentially zero. Yes. So, so that means that um, if those are zero, but the pi zeros are not, um, then I think. You cannot claim that this can, can be coming from Siebel's alone. I think that that picture is out of the question at that point. So, I will call for paper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's why I don't want to, you know, muscle my, my opinion. So I guess, I mean, the combination of all measurements would definitely help. Corner would provide this. I think one of the things. I think you should like DIS is a little bit of you cannot do anything against it. Well, we'll be able to figure it out. Yeah. So <laughs> one of the things, for example, to resolve this by zero pass is a forward upgrade which we are planning at uh, at the I actually have. And so as such to have uh, calculations and predictions for this, again we can send measure by plus and by minus as Phoenix has done already the first measurements in uh, uh, in the new announce, we can go more forward. It's the same kinematics versus by zero is and so on. It can do real jets. And I think it would be interesting to get some advice what you would like to see from us yes. and actually help us to get that through uh, the administration sometimes. Because uh, <coughs> always saying, oh, it's not relevant, it's not helping. Because then you will not get any data. Nice. 
Can you yeah, just I, I think I'm, I'm still, I'm, it's like for a second completely forget about all the series results. If I just look at the PP results so far, and um, if I start out with the assumption that um, it's all coming from from CBAS, then I think you cannot get, make this consistent with the fact that the pi zeros are large and non-zero symmetries, but the jets have essentially zero symmetry. In the same, so same, same kinematics? Yes. Close it's enough. The same, uh, it's the same rapidity range. Close, and, um, but same PT? Uh, no, the jets of course are slightly more. But uh, we can, that is exactly why I'm bringing up the forward upgrade, because there we can right. make it consistent. It will be the same detector setup, which measures the set, not different ones. I mean, it is, after all, I have this, so, you know, if the jets would be smaller, it would be yeah. the power suppression, right? It's true. Yeah. It be, I mean, I, I don't know whether it works out that way, but it's, 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 So this is a, so is a jet result of the star? Or? No, it's a jet result, it's the one from LV. But, uh, oh, so I see. Yeah, but that, of course, you have to watch out. Okay, it's like a jet-like structure. Yeah. Okay. So the thing is, uh, the enemy result is nice, but it has not underlying events subtracted and all the things which are very important in this forward direction because you pump in uh, the remnant uh, which goes forward. And so with uh, the larger acceptance, we can do this. Can you forward uh, detect the little photons? I'm sorry. Okay, you see the it will be de designed for doing so yeah, well, because it will have tracking zero, right? and exactly. So <laughs> okay. it will be really much more efficient than what we have now. But anyway, for what concerns like the sign of the serious function, uh, apart from the these three ASMR observables, there are the data and uh, improvement of the data of the zero action. So that's yes. I two yes. squared. Yes. It seems that it is all compatible with some change. Uh, it's even bigger than we, we expect because uh, the evolution <laughs> yeah, like, For the C, it takes the other bus into account. So it, it can, yeah, yeah, but, exactly. it, uh, so, but if you take the W plus the W minus and the C yeah, together, to all of them are consistent with the sign change. Yes. And also the compass is very young. So if you take this data as a mm -hmm. whole, then yes. Yeah, that's actually the point I want to mention too. I mean, what was the result should or leave out? So I don't know what, what happened there. No, no, okay. We have one, one point, they have it out. The problem is the statistics. We have the yeah. point out. Yeah, but if you take this ones <laughs> together, then I think yeah. you have a hint yeah, that it comes together. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's already pretty late. I think we should close the morning session. And uh, please, uh, we should be back at 2 uh, p.m. Let's thank all the speakers again.